Welcome to the Lewis and Enid Barnes Recital Hall at the USF School of Music. At this time, we ask you to please silence your cell phones or any other device that may make noise during this performance. We also remind you that the use of recording devices and flash photography is strictly prohibited. In the event of an emergency, exits are located at the rear of the hall. If you must leave at any time, please wait for a member of the house staff to guide you back to your seat. Thank you and enjoy today's performance.
go on a third one. So here we are. It's Saturday, April 22nd, the year 2023, and we're at the sophomore side of the math world. Next, I'm going to be playing a little piece by a man named Jacques de la Cruz. Uh, de la Cruz is one of the most prolific uh, percussionists and percussion composers that we have in our repertoire. Um, he's most famous for his 12 etudes, uh, which is uh, like the most important book in percussion uh, etude uh, repertoire. Uh, but this is not from that. This is from a. Uh, this is a completely separate work. It's called Test Player, um, and it's similar to his 12 etudes, except it sort of combines elements of all of the most uh, famous ones. So uh, this will not be quite as fascinating as the last one, but I hope you enjoy Test Player.
the snare just talk a little bit. First of all, let's give them a hand. Let me come out. <laughs> Mount Moray, uh, complete and total change of pace here. Let's talk a little bit about JS Bach. Um, I was talking about Stravinsky the other day in, uh, in the percussion studio class, and it made me think about who are truly our top composers of all time in the history of music. And J.S. Bach is one of these composers that just must be on the list, right? Um, who knows how many works he actually wrote, but by far he was the most prolific uh, Baroque era composer, and certainly the most performed and remembered today. Um, however, Bach did not exactly have a five octave marimba sitting in front of him when he was composing these pieces, but a large part of the percussion repertoire has become uh, doing transcriptions of these pieces onto mallet instruments. So today I will be performing the first two movements of the Bach Violin Sonata in G minor. This is the very first one that he ever wrote. Um, and yeah, are we all ready to go? Yeah. Here it is. Bach's first violin sonata in G minor. Thank 
Thank you.
very nervous about that one. <laughs> I think I did well. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on, yes. Um, John Bergamo is a very prolific uh, 20th century composer. Not a percussion composer very often, though. But he did compose the solo for timpani called Four Pieces for Timpani. Um, the four movements are entitled Recitative, uh, Perpetual Motion, Elegia, and Finale. The first movement is sort of designed to uh, mimic an aria from an opera. Uh oh, the wheels are locked. Here we go. I guess I'll have to keep talking for a second. So, the second movement is sort of all about uh, moving around the drums, never stopping your motion around them, perpetual motion as it would. Alethea is sort of like a funeral march. Um, it's quite nice though, and it actually uses a pretty uncommon technique in timpani, which is playing the four mallets at the same time. And then the last one, finale, is a very boisterous, uh, barbaric, if you would, uh, movement. So, this is a nice piece with lots of contrasting things, lots of great uses of these fantastic drums, so I'll tune them up and we'll get started.
We'll be bringing back out Wyatt Patch and Andrea, give them a round of applause. <laughs> and uh, I guess this is a good time to thank uh, my professor, Kevin Moncompton, Dr. Kevin Moncompton, um, you know, who has been perpetually making me feel bad about my playing for us. I'm joking. Well, sort of. But um, the reality is so many of the things that, uh, you know, we as a studio have been able to achieve, especially coming out of a really difficult time with COVID, has been made possible by him and by his, uh, his nonstop desire to make this studio a better place. Um, and although sometimes that's frustrating, Although sometimes those 8 a.m. percussion ensemble rehearsals work or hurt, um, what he's doing has been working, and he's really creating a fine, fine studio here at USF. Um, and additionally, just his personal mentorship and guidance has been tremendous. So uh, I can't appreciate you enough, KVKA. Come on back out. Come on. <laughs> uh, the reason I say this now, though, is because he's about to be running this. Um, it's, I wouldn't exactly call this a piece of music. It's more of a live looping experiment where uh, this piece is called 24 Loops, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Kevin in the back is going to be running a logic file um, that has 24 different loop tracks on it. And essentially what we are going to be doing is 28 beats at a time, layering loops onto loops onto loops. And we're going to do that 24 times, and then, then at the end we're all going to take a nice big fat solo over it. So, Hopefully this technology works. If it doesn't bear with us, we'll be live troubleshooting, but I'm sure it'll be just fine. So here we go. 24 loops. Oh, I need more headphones. Hold on. There we go. Yeah, we want good sound.
High school, Kyle Spence gave me a really great opportunity there. Um, had some good fun teaching up there, did some good teaching and whatnot. But Steinbrenner was um, a job that just kind of fell into my lap. Again, fortunately, because of life. And the journey that we have been on for the last year and a half has been pretty tremendous together. So I'm really thankful for you all giving me the opportunity, like I said, to mess up um, and just letting me be in front of you every day. Uh, it's a greater privilege and pleasure in my life than you will ever know. Um, and I just hope you will understand that you guys are the shining star in my life. Uh, lastly, uh, I need to thank my family. Obviously, uh, I wouldn't even be alive if it wasn't for them. But uh, furthermore, even through some very difficult times in our family life these last few years, uh, the, the nonstop support that I've received in coming to college, being a music major, and doing all of this stuff, uh, despite the tremendous difficulties that come with it, uh, you all, you know, rose to the occasion. You're awesome as you always are, so I really appreciate that. And one more person in the audience I should thank, uh, Dr. McCutcheon, thank you for coming, by the way. But um, I'll just tell a little anecdote, and then I'll play my last piece. I remember, it, well, I was in seventh grade, and in the Walker Middle School band room, and by the way, I should also be thanking all of my past fantastic educators, Heather Lundahl, Louis Alvarez, Chris Dell, and um, Debbie Cleveland, although none of them are here today. Uh, they are all, they are all a part of this. Um, but I remember being in the band room in seventh grade. Uh, we were doing an after school rehearsal. We were doing like a recording session on something because Walker did all sorts of stuff. And Dr. McCutcheon came in and I hadn't met him before. And he said something to me. I forget exactly what it was, but I was playing this Tiffany part too loud. And he said something along the lines of, this isn't the concerto for Tiffany. And then I was never more scared of somebody from my entire life. <laughs> Um, 
but over the last many years, um, he has been somehow a part of my musical journey, and uh, it's just really awesome that you're here. So thank you very much. Um, the last piece I'm going to be performing for you all tonight uh, is Selections from Reflections on the Nature of Water. This is one of the um, top solos in the percussion uh, repertoire. Um, obviously, this piece is about different elements of water, and uh, when Drucken was composing this, that's what he was thinking about. So our first movement is called Crystalline, our second is called Fleet, and the fourth movement, which will be the last selection, is called Gently Swung. So I hope you enjoy Reflections on the Nature of Water. Thank you. 
Thank you.